after months, and I mean months of waiting, months of uncertainty, and just months of boringness, the 2020-2021 NHL season is finally about to start. And so with the season 10 days away from starting, it's time to predict what the Leafs lines are going to look like this season. Now a lot of changes are made to the Leafs lineup this off season, particularly on the depth end. So there's gonna be a lot of changes in the bottom six, a lot of changes on the back pairing and bottom three defenders, hell even the top three defenders of TJ Brody coming in. And as we saw today, Sheldon Keefe revealed what his starting lines are going to be. Now this board isn't going to match what Sheldon Keefe's starting lines are because this isn't what the Leafs are going to start the season with. This is what I think the long-term lines the Leafs are going to arrive at over the course of the season is going to be. So while the starting night roster is probably not going to look like what I have up here, this is what I think the long-term Leafs ideal roster is going to end up looking like. So first off, we're gonna look at the forward group. So we got first line, the classic Hyman Matthews Nylander. Now I know this hasn't been tried for a while. I know Hyman's been bouncing back between the Tavares line and with Matthews and even the third line for a bit. But last season, Zach Hyman was absolutely fantastic. He was on pace for over 30 goals over a full season if he didn't get hurt and if the season wasn't delayed. Matthews, clear number one center. William Nylander always plays his best when he's playing with Matthews and when him and Matthews together are clicking and going, they are going. I know a lot of people are talking about putting Marner up on this line, but out of all the guys that Tavares has played with, the one he's gelled the best with is Marner. So I think for that reason, Marner and Tavares are going to end up being together. That's not saying that Marner and Matthews are never going to play together. They're probably going to play at least a quarter of the season on the same line. I think the most common line usage is going to be the classic Hyman, Matthews, Nylander top line. Second unit, also something we've seen before, Soup. Tavares Marner. Tavares Marner, like I said before, Ilya Mikheyev was a great sidekick to those two before he got injured last season. I think fully rested, fully healthy, his arm fully healed. Ilya Mikheyev is a very good second line supporting role guy for Tavares and Marner. And I think his defensive responsibility is just something that you want to have being played more often by keeping him on the second line. Third line, this one is a new look one. Jimmy VC, Alex Kerfoot, Wayne Simmons. Alex Kerfoot, of course, this third line center for most of last season. Jimmy VC, new signing. Guy who didn't live up to his full hype, but he's a pretty solid third liner, so I think that's where he's gonna slot in. Wayne Simmons will probably swing back and forth between the third and fourth lines. I feel like our fourth line is gonna be a very skilled, almost power play specialist line, and probably won't get a huge amount of five on five minutes. So Wayne Simmons to get more five on five minutes where he's going to thrive to be just the grinding presence that the Leafs need, the asshole-ish, big, tough, bang and crash guy that the Leafs need him to be, he's gonna be on the third line, especially put him with Kerfoot, because Kerfoot can be a little nasty in his own right. That combination has potential to be very pesty. This line could be like a very solid pest line if they all sort of play to their more darker assy sides. And in the fourth line, Nick Robertson, Joe Thornton, Jason Spezza. You got a teenager and two old folks. And I just realized I spelled Thornton wrong. That's better. Thornton, Obviously here to play regular minutes. Jason Spezza, he was fantastic last season. Those two very, very good players, albeit nearing the end of their careers, are gonna be very useful influences in the room and just very still solid players. And Nick Robertson, the kid's legit. The kid deserves to be in the NHL. This could be one of the highest scoring fourth lines in the NHL if the Leafs do choose to play it. And over here I have in red, what I'm calling the extras. Now, of course, this season's gonna be a little bit different. There's gonna be a lot more back-to-back. -back. So because of that, I think we're gonna see a lot more rotation in the lineup than we usually do. So I have my extras here, which is two guys who I think are going to be regularly seen rotating into the lineup. First off is Alex Barabanov. Very good player from the KHL. I'm not sure if he's going to be full-time NHL, but I could see him slotting in for Robertson and Thornton on a lot of nights, so maybe he could be in the lineup like 60% of the time if everyone's healthy, more if injuries become a thing. And Joey Anderson, I could see getting into a few games here and there, just added a little more bang and crash to the lineup. He could be a useful piece that will probably get a bit of play time. Moving on to the defensemen. Okay, defensive pairs. First pair, Morgan Riley, obviously, and TJ Brody. TJ Brody, 
the big new free agent signing. Actually, this is the second time the Leafs tried to get him because the original Kadri trade was Kadri to Calgary for Brody, which Kadri blocked using his no trade clause. But TJ Brody, after two summers of trying, finally Kyle Dubas got him in Toronto. Yes, he is a left shot D, but he's a left shot D who plays the right side. So he is a right side D, but he shoots left. It's a little confusing. But two very solid puck moving defensemen. That should be a solid first pair. And TJ Brody will probably be the best defender Morgan Rowley has partnered with in his entire career. Second pairing, the classic Jake Muzzin, Justin Hall. Justin Hall was great last season. He somehow went from never being played to being Leafs' most consistent defenseman in a season, which was kind of weird. And Jake Muzzin is just Jake Muzzin. We know exactly what he is. He's the solid second pairing left shot D behind Morgan Riley. This is another solid pairing. The third pairing is where things get interesting. I have Rasmus Sandin, Travis Dermott. I think Rasmus Sandin is going to take a step this season and solidify himself in the lineup. Travis Dermott needs to get to know how to play the right side or he's done. And I have my two extras here, Jack Bogosian and Miko Lettinen. Bogosian did play 20 playoff games for the Lightning on route to the money in the Stanley Cup last season. So he's a solid pick, right hand defenseman. So he is the guy that Travis Dermott's gotta be better than. I could see Bogosian easily sliding in and being the number six right shot defenseman on most nights. Same goes for Miko Lettinen. He could be on the third pairing as well. Honestly, the third pairing, I think is just gonna be a flux of these four guys. Sandine, Dermot, Bogosian, Lettinen are all gonna kind of be slotting in and out of it for most of the season. If both Sandine and Dermot play to their potential, they could easily be the third pairing. But I think if that doesn't happen, we're gonna see a lot more fluidity between Bogosian, Lettinen, Sandine, Dermot. And we could very easily have Bogosian, Lettinen end up being the third pairing and Sandine, Dermot being scratches. So these four guys are gonna kind of be very fluid. Justin Hall also could potentially fall into that area if he's not playing well but I think he's more stable in his job. These four guys, any of them could be full-time regulars on the team. Any of them could be not so much on the bench, only coming in due to injury or whatnot, but they're all definitely going to get significant play time during the season. It's just a question of in what role and at what time. And the goalies, I think we all know how this one's gonna go. Freddie starting, Jack Campbell as the backup, and Aaron Dell as the third goalie. If Michael Hutchinson so much as touches the ice, I might lose my mind. A full season of Jack Campbell at backup is something I am so happy for. We finally have a guy who I'd say is a solid backup who I trust. Aaron Dell is a much more solid third option than Michael Hutchinson was. Heck, this is the first time that we actually have solid choices behind Freddie going into a season since Mick backup left, which was way too long ago for this to be the first time we're having solid goalies backing up Freddie to go into the season. So there you have it. That is my lineup predictions for the Toronto Maple Leafs going in to the 2021 NHL season. Let me know down below in the comments what you think lines are gonna be. And if you like this video, hit like. If you wanna see more of my stuff, hit subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, link is down below in the description and I will see you next time.